Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Caroline if you are new here and if you are not new here, I'm still Caroline. Welcome. Um, I cannot believe I am actually in lockdown for the fourth time in like 18 months. So that's great news for me. But uh, it's the end of May. Um, well, it's actually now June, um, but May finished, so I thought I'd wrap May up. Let's get into it. months of this year I had read like 30 books a month like I was pretty consistent with like high volume reading um, but for some reason in May things kind of just took a turn um, I suppose I hit a bit of a slump a lot of the books that I really enjoyed kind of left me feeling empty um, and so I didn't really read a lot and I just couldn't find much that was I was enjoying. I read like a few that I kind of left halfway um, and just kind of put aside. So I think that kind of really just demotivated me for reading, I guess. Uh, but I was really excited. I read two paperbacks. Yay! Um, and so I haven't done that in a while. I haven't read a paperback, I think, since like February. So yeah, actually, I think like the last paperback was like... You know what it was? That that Hades one. What's it called? Darkness something. Oh, I don't remember. It's sitting there on the floor. My face is just break out. COVID face, which is fantastic. I just love this lighting. It really highlights all that. So I'm excited for that. Um, okay, let's let's get to the real reason why we're here, which is to talk about books. Um, so let's talk. I'm just gonna like start from like the start. I have my little listy thing. I got a um, I got this from Outcrate. It's called a reading planner, and I have to be honest with you, this has changed my world this year um, in a lot of ways. And I know in some videos I'm like, oh, I forgot the characters' names. I have adapted myself to now write down the characters' names on the reading planner. Um, so it kind of like acts like a little reminder kind of thing um, and then I just kind of note down as well like points or like features that I liked about a book or I didn't like about the book and like that way I can just kind of rejog my memory um, but yeah so I'm actually I probably to be honest with you don't understand how I've lived my life without a reading planner um, for sure I would like always get a reading planner now I didn't even think it was like important but it actually is um, and I would actually recommend this for anyone. I know I got mine, like I said, in our crate, but I'm sure like if you guys want, I can go looking and I will recommend you some reading planners in another video. Let me know what you think. Um, you know what? I might just do a video recommending reading planners anyway, because I truly do think that they're just amazing. Um, don't mind me. I'm currently having my Blair Waldorf moment. I have always loved about Blair Waldorf. If you don't know who Blair Waldorf is, she is from Gossip Girl. She is the Queen Bee um, for a reason. And when I saw this headband, I was like, I need to have it. Duh. <laughs> okay, so I have sidetracked us enough now. Um, the first book I read this month was The Devil Wears Black by LJ Shen. Um, and so this was actually my first time reading LJ Shen. I've never read her before that. So many people recommend her. So many people say her books are amazing. Um, so I was really excited for this. I was, well, I wouldn't even say I was really excited. I was like, I had high expectations. A lot of my friends from Bookstagram rave about LJ Shen and her writing. And so I was like, we're friends. We have the same reading interests. Like, you know, if you're telling me she's great, I know she's going to be great. Um, and so I got this book, which is her newest, I believe. Um, or if not her newest, one of her new ones. 
Um, so basically this book follows Maddie and Chase. Um, and it's a enemies to lovers, second chance romance kind of thing. So basically Chase's dad is dying and so he lies and tells his family that he is um, engaged to Maddie, which he's not. So then he he kind of like gets her to pretend to be engaged, so like a fake engagement. Um, and then basically they realise that they still love each other and blah. That's this book. Um, Steam wise, this book was really bad. I'm sorry to say. There was like one scene at like this page, yeah, it's like 350 pages. The steamy scene was at like page 290. So I was like, it's not, like it wasn't considered slow burn romance, because it wasn't, but it was in a way. And I didn't really like that, because I just, I don't know, from what I'd heard, I expected this book to be. A lot more um, steamy right now let's do this let's go kind of thing which it wasn't and just even the steamy scenes they just weren't that good like they were just kind of you could gloss over it as you're reading and you would still get everything you're not in the moment kind of thing that some other authors do a really good job of um, and I just I don't know like there was just no chemistry between Maddie and Chase there was just no chemistry between Maddie and any of the characters. It was very square. This book was very square, very two-dimensional. And I think that was one of the reasons why I didn't really like it. And I gave it like three stars. Two or three stars, I think. Um, 2.5 to 3. So, like high 2.5, low 3 kind of thing. Um, and yeah, so basically if this was the only book, if no one had said to me, oh, she's such a great author, and I picked this book up, I, I've got to be honest, I wouldn't read anymore by this author because it was just not great. Um, and then once I like put my review on Instagram, a lot of people were like, actually, I felt the same way about this book too. So I don't know, maybe something went wrong with writing this book. Am I going to give her another shot? Yes. Will I be guarded with that other shot? Hell yes. We'll see. Okay, so. Moving on to the next book I read, which did not disappoint in the steam, in the chemistry, in just the all-round oh my godness of this book. Oh, I've got books behind me there. I decided to change up a little bit, and I've now got my books behind me. I love it. Um, but yeah, so basically, the next book that was like oh my god worthy was called Mr. Masters by T. L. Swan. And I actually read this book based off of BookTok recommendations. I know, BookTok is really bad. It's really good at the moment at like just creating frenzy around a lot of books. Um, and because obviously BookTok is really, it's a large platform that's growing really quickly, a lot of people are like sweeping through and going, oh my god, okay, you've read that, I'm going to read that. That kind of thing. I think that's how like MK kind of, the Madison Kate series just blew up, like you have no idea. Um, but yeah, so this is Mr. Masters by T.L. Swan. So basically, it's an age gap romance. So Brielle goes to, she's Australian, goes to the UK to work as a nanny for Mr. Masters, Mr. Julian Masters. Um, and he's got two kids. One thing I didn't really get with this book is it didn't really come across that the daughter was like 15 until like the end. Um, and I found that a bit weird. Like I thought the kids were more closer in age. And I just, that was one thing that like really I didn't like. But other than that, like it was a really good book. Um, but basically, yeah, so Brielle goes to become a nanny for Julian and his family. And basically Julian is like this turgid character who his wife passed away and he's just kind of in a shell, um, living his life, worrying about his kids. And basically Brielle comes and just pulls him out and brush he's in and they fall happily in love and it was just really really great steam wise chemistry wise like <laughs> I recommend this book to anyone obviously there is an age gap if you don't really like that don't read the book but yeah this changes my perspective on a lot of things um then I also read also oh, that was five stars I don't know if you guys realized that Maybe you didn't. Um, I read Mr. Spencer, which um, 
is the follow-up book. So basically, Julian Masters is in a group of three. So there's Julian, Spence, and his friend Sebastian. So like, the, like that's the series. Um, and so the first book followed Julian, the second book followed Spencer. So basically, Spencer meets Charlotte at this function, and she's like this royalty kind of billionaire person. <laughs> she's also like you know in her early twenties, and Mr. Ma and Mr. Spence is like. 38, so he's like nearly 40. Um, this book did have like the virgin trope, which I don't really like, I've got to be honest with you. Uh, but it was done okay. And that's really it. Basically, yeah, like um, Charlotte is the youngest of three, and her two older brothers are extremely protective. Her dad is extremely protective. She's a billionaire. Wow. Um, and so basically, she meets Mr. Spence. Well, he's not Mr. Spencer. His name's Spencer, but I just call him Mr. Spencer because it just sounds so cool. Um, but she meets Spencer, and he like falls in love with her, and so then she kind of they have like a like secret relationship kind of thing, and you know because she's like she's like 24 and she's like a billionaire, um, she decides to try and like live a bit like a normal person, so she gets like, this menial job and like that's how they carry on their relationship and all that stuff and yes so basically it's a pretty standard plot line like there's no tricks or twists or anything um, but it's just like well well written I guess and that's what makes it important uh, sometimes plot lines don't have to have all these hidden curveballs and these hidden things in them as long as it's a really succinct plot line that has really good chemistry and really well written then it's a great book I suppose um, same, I gave it five stars, and chemistry wise, same, fantastic, tension, same, steam, same. Um, TL Swan is fantastic, if you have not read her books, the smart level on this is fantastic. Um, so then, I read, um, Hate Notes by Vi Keelan and Penelope Ward. Um, I have a love-hate relationship with these two. Not the characters, the authors. <laughs> so these authors are fantastic at creating books that are just phenomenally sad. Um, and they just make you want to cry. And so I don't know why I bought this book when I knew that it was going to do that, but it's because the guy on the front is hot. Like, come on, look how hot he is. This was totally a cover buy. Um, if anyone ever tells you that they don't buy a book based on a cover, I call bullshit. 100%. This was a cover buy again. Um, I didn't mind this book. It was sad, <laughs> as to be expected. But basically, uh, this one had Reed and Charlotte as the two main characters. And so basically, Charlotte, her fiance is caught with his pants down. Um, and so she just doesn't get married to him, obviously. And she goes to the consignment store to sell her wedding dress. And while she's there, she finds a dress. A little note tucked inside. She took it home and she was like so upset because like you know she just handed in her wedding dress and her life was falling apart. Um, basically did a deep dive into the guy who left a note in his future bride's wedding dress and found Reed and she saw he was this prominent property um, real estate agent property developer kind of thing and so basically booked an appointment to see like a 72 million dollar apartment which is not something she could afford but when she got there he basically humiliates her and then she's like in the bathroom and she talks to his grandma and she gets a job and she works there and that's how this works um the guy on the front is really really cute the book itself was okay i gave it like three stars it was not so spicy um it was also i guess a bit sad because reed was sick um, it just, and th there was just so many moments. If you read these these two authors um, a lot, you know that they have a really good way of making you feel very sad. Um, and they did that with this book. So, yeah, that's that one. Um, next, I have the third installment in like one of my favorite series of all time. Which is the next book in the Boys of Winter, Deviant, oh my god. Um, if you've seen my previous videos, you would know that I'm absolutely obsessed with Dynasty. Uh, so much, I love Carver. And just, uh, 
reverse harm is just fantastic, right? Um, so basically in Deviant, we pick up kind of where we left off um, from the, the second book and we're still trying to figure out more about Dynasty. This one, thank God, finally we get some cover action. Um, and then it just kind of, I don't really want to ruin it because if I start talking and explaining a bit about the book, you'll kind of get what's going on and that's not what I want to do or achieve. Um, but it ends with a cliffhanger as always and yeah, highly recommend this series. If you have not read it, it's about a secret underworld um, organization that basically owns everything and there's um, 17 families, eight good, eight bad, one that is the middle kind of judicial family that resides over all of them. Um, and so basically Winter gets two on each side, two good, two bad, and she's from the middle family and it's just fantastic. Um, the next series I read, which they're a best harm too. I don't really know what to make of it, to be honest with you. Like, as I was reading it, I was like, okay, I like this. And then I was like, I don't know if I like this. And then, like, so many things happened, and I was like, I don't know. And, um, let me explain to you what the series is. So, the first book is called The Angels. by Ruby Vincent. Um, so basically, it starts off weird because it starts off like with a whole different group of guys. So basically, let me try and explain this properly. So Ember is an orphan. Her parents stole money from the gated off community area where she's from. They stole $25 million to be exact. And they ran off and they left her and her brother. And so basically everyone hates Ember and her brother because they think that she knows where her parents are and where the money is and she's just refusing to tell everyone. But what they don't know is Ember doesn't know anything. And so basically it starts off with her um, going to this like party and then there's like this group of guys that she like went to school with and they're all like each from like the prominent families that lost money and like one of them he's like like one of the guys that really likes her. And then it like flips. And then like like it moves to like two weeks in advance. And they go to school. And when she's at the school, she meets the guy that she like had a fling with. And so it's like a whole different group of guys that become her harem. And it's just weird how they like play the two off. Like I just felt that really weird. Like I couldn't wrap my brain around that. But basically, yeah, so the main thing about this story is that there's 25 million bucks that have been stolen. And eventually Ember ends up finding that money and her parents, a few other things happen along the way. Um, the main guys in her harem are Royal, Pyro, Clay and Cassius. Clay and Cassius are two of the three triplets. Um, yes, yeah, so there's three books in the series, which is also a little strange because usually with Reverse Harem, the amount of books is the amount of but then I just realized MK's four books for three people. So I don't know what the f I'm talking about. But anyway, <laughs> so the first book, um, the second book is called The Sinners. So the first book had no steam in it. I'm not going to lie. The first book was pretty bad. Um, the second book had some steam in it. And the third book was pretty steamy. Even still, the steamy scenes weren't that great. The third book was called The End. Um, this was a solid three star series for me. And spice wise, the last two were pretty good, but that was about it. The first one was not. The first one didn't actually have much happening, to be honest with you. It was more just kind of like setting the scene and laying it all out, which was a bit annoying. Um, but yeah, that was basically it. I don't have any more books. That was all I read this month. So that was my wrap up. I had some good ones. Um, mostly it was kind of average, and I think that's what also led to me wanting to read less. Um, because I wasn't on a roll of like, oh, this is great, oh, this is great, oh, this is great. Um, but definitely Deviant was one that I was so looking forward to and it just did not disappoint. So that was really exciting. But other than that, that was it for me for this month of May. <laughs> Hopefully June will have some better reads for me. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I will see you all next time with my next video.